Welcome to lecture 17 of the course Representations of Finite Groups. Today we are going to talk about induced representations. So before getting to induced representations, let me begin with that we have already seen in this course. So let G be a group and H a subgroup of the group G. So let phi from G to GLV be a representation of G, be a representation of G. Then we can restrict this uh, representation phi on the subgroup H, right? Just as a map, then we can restrict phi on H to get a representation of H. So let us denote this restriction by this standard notation, restriction of the representation phi from G to H. Okay. So this is a map from where? Is a map from H to GLV. And how does it act? Where restriction of phi from G to H, it act on any little h as simply phi of H. Okay, and obviously it's homomorphism because restriction of a group homomorphism is again a group homomorphism. Now what we are going to do is to do a reverse process. So if you are given a representation of a subgroup, how can we get a representation of the parent group? This is and this can be done by a process called induction and the representation that you get are called induced representations. So this is the aim of this lecture. Before getting to induced representations, we will define what you call induced characters. So we will first observe how to extend a class preserving function from a subgroup of a group G to the whole of the group G. And once we are able to extend the class functions, then we will see how to extend the representation itself. So let us begin with this observation. So note that if phi is irreducible, then restriction of phi from G to H need not be irreducible. So let's see an example. If you take H to be center of the group G, then for each little h in H, phi sub H into phi G is same as phi H G, but H is in center, so that is same as phi G into phi G H, that is same as phi G into phi H, right? For all G in the group G. That implies that phi sub H is a morphism of the representation phi. So this implies that phi sub H belong to home G phi phi, okay, for all H in the subgroup H. So if phi is irreducible by Schur's lemma, phi H is a scalar multiple of the identity. So by Schur's lemma, Schur's lemma, we see that phi H is just lambda H times identity for some lambda H in fact in C star because phi H is invertible. So what, the, what does it mean? So therefore, if uh, phi H, if you apply phi H on any vector of your underlying representation space, it is just a scalar multiple of that vector. So therefore, if you take any non-zero vector in your representation space V, 
phi h of that v is lambda h of v so it again falls in the vector subspace spanned by that v so therefore each one dimensional subspace of v is kept invariant by this restriction map thus for each v not equal to 0 in the underlying vector in the representation space v we see that phi h of v is equals to lambda h times v which belong to the vector subspace spanned by this vector v so this implies that the restriction of phi from the group g to center or in general a central subgroup a subgroup which is contained the center is not irreducible okay so restriction of an irreducible representation need not be irreducible most often it is not irreducible all right now we want to go in the other direction that is given a representation of a subgroup h of a group g and a, uh, we want to extend it to a representation of the whole of the group so to do that we will first begin with class preserving functions that is if we have class preserving functions on a subgroup h of g how to extend them to class preserving functions on the whole of the group g and then we are going to extend representations on the subgroup h to the whole of the group g so let's begin with some elementary observations first let g be a group and h a subgroup of the group g let f from g to c be a function not necessary class preserving then we can restrict this f to h right and denote it by restriction of f from g to h a very elementary observation here if h is a subgroup of a group g then if we denote this map as restriction map restriction gh from the center of the group algebra cg to center of the group algebra ch is a linear map is a c linear map this is a pretty straightforward result so nevertheless let me just write one line so observe that what are the elements of center of the group algebra elements of center of the group algebra are the class preserving functions on the group g so restriction of a class preserving function is a class preserving function that's what you need to observe okay so note that so if f belong to center of the group algebra cg then restriction of f from g to h look at this map and i want to show its class preserving function on h right so take a conjugate of an element of h in h so x h x inverse but by definition this is just f of x h x inverse but now this uh, x h x inverse is a conjugate of h in the group itself therefore this is just same as f of h right which just by definition is same as restriction of f from g to h acting on h for all x and h in h so therefore restriction of a class function on g to h is again a class function and its linear is clear because and its linear is obvious because cg is a vector space with pointwise addition of functions we first defined restriction of representation then restriction of complex valued function and now let us go in the other direction we want to define a linear map from center of the group algebra of the subgroup h to center of the group algebra of the whole of the group g let us say h is a subgroup of the group g and say f from h to c a complex valued function later we will restrict to characters and so on but right now we are just taking arbitrary complex valued functions 
let us define define f dot from g to c by this rule f dot of any x is equals to f of x if x is in the subgroup h and 0 otherwise if it is not in the subgroup h thus we get a map from ch the underlying vector space of the group algebra of h to cg given by f goes to f dot clearly this is a c linear map a very simple observation i am not going to work it out but this gives something interesting proposition let h be a subgroup of a group g and define the map induction map from h to g this is how you read it from center of the group algebra of the subgroup h to center of group algebra of your whole of the group g by the following formula so induction of a function f from h to g so i want it to be a uh, an element of the center of the group algebra of the group g so first of all it should be a complex valued function from g to c so how does it act on a group element so acting on a group element g by this rule as 1 by order of h and summation x in the group g and now you see f is a complex valued function on h right so first of all you extend it to a complex valued function on g right now you don't know whether that is uh, class preserving or not just a complex valued function and which we already did in the form of f dot so define it to be f dot x inverse g x so then my claim is the following then induction map from h to g is a c linear map okay so let's prove it so first thing we should check is that the function makes sense that is induction of any function f is an element of center of the group algebra of the group g that is i have to show that induction of f is a class function on g right let us say y and g be two element of the group g then consider the following induction of f from h to g and apply it on this conjugate of g y inverse g y and what is this i just write down the formula so that is just same as 1 by order of the subgroup h summation run x in the group g and then this f dot of conjugate of this y inverse g y by x so that is x inverse y inverse g y x but what you do is the following notice that y is an element of the group g and x is also an element of the group g so you can do some change of variables right so you write y x as some z and therefore this is same as 1 by h summation z in your group g and f dot of z inverse g z where let me write it here where x y i have set as z but this is exactly the induction because here now the variable is z so therefore this is just same as induction of f from h to g acting on the element little g so this shows that induction of a class function is a class function and what are the special class function that we are interested in this course they are the characters of representations so therefore if you have a character of a representation on the subgroup h then you can extend it to a class preserving function on the group g 
right now i am not saying that you can extend it to character of some representation you can at least extend it to a class presenting function on the group g and in fact it will turn out that it will be a character of some representation that comes from the representation of the subgroup so this shows that induction uh, is a well defined map it goes from center of the group algebra of the subgroup to center of the group algebra of the group g and linearity is something very uh, obvious so i will leave it as a homework clearly induction from h to g is a c linear map because the addition of functions here is just point wise so it follows easily so what is frobenius reciprocity let h be a subgroup of a group g let mu belong to center of the group algebra of the subgroup h and new belong to center of the group algebra of the group g that is mu is a class function on the subgroup h and new is a class function on the group g then the following formula holds there is this nice reciprocity law here that look at the induction of mu from subgroup h to g then it becomes a class preserving function by preceding uh, proposition on the whole of the group g and therefore you can talk about is inner product with another class preserving function of the group g with new this will be some complex number this is same as you take mu which is a class preserving function on the subgroup h and consider the restriction of new from g to the subgroup h and take its inner product with mu so consider this inner product induction of mu from the subgroup h to the group g and its inner product with new recall that this inner product is the inner product on the uh, group algebra so which is by definition is order of the group which is uh, 1 by order of the group g here summation g in the group g right and then induction of mu from the subgroup h to the group g and uh, then this will act on the group element g and then new of g bar all right but we know induct formula of induction from the preceding slide so this is just same as 1 by order of the group g summation g in the group g and that is 1 by order of the subgroup h summation summation x in the group g and then mu dot of x inverse g x and then times nu of g bar remain there i can bring out the constants outside so 1 by order of the group g 1 by order of the subgroup h summation finite sum so i can interchange them i can write it as x and g summation g in the group g mu dot x inverse gx into nu of g bar recall the definition of this dot notation what does this dot means this mu dot of x inverse gx is just mu of x inverse gx if this element x inverse gx is in this subgroup h and zero otherwise right so we just count those uh, values which survive here which are non zero others are going to contribute only zero recall that mu dot of x inverse gx is is zero if x inverse gx is not in the subgroup h so we should focus only for those x for which x inverse gx is in h so thus mu dot 
of x inverse gx is possibly non-zero only if x inverse gx is in the subgroup H. This implies that G can be written as X H X inverse for some H in H. Because X inverse GX is in H means X inverse GX is equal to some little h. That implies that little g is X H X inverse for some H in H. We plug in this value of G in the last uh, expression, the star, okay? So this implies that this inner product of induction of mu from H to G with mu is same as one by order of the group G, one by order of the subgroup H, summation X in the group G, and little g, I have been able to write as x h x inverse where h is in g. And x I am already wearing in g, so I can write replace second summation as h in capital H. And then mu dot of x inverse gx, but x inverse gx is little h, which is in h. So therefore mu dot of any element which is in h is just mu of that element. So it is just mu of little h new of g which is x h x inverse right and of course there is a bar over here but now observe the following what is new new is an element in the center of the group algebra of g that is it is a class preserving function on g new of x h x inverse is just same as new of h so therefore this expression is just same as one by order of the group G times one by order of H summation X in group G summation little h in H mu of H into nu of little h is bar. Notice that the summation, summation little h in H mu of H into nu of H bar this summation is independent of uh, the uh, the variable x in g okay therefore you are summing this expression let me put a bracket here this one you are summing it order of group many times so it will get cancelled and therefore what is left is 1 by order of h into summation h in h mu of h into new of h whole bar but what is this this is simply the inner product of mu and new but new was a function from g to c so therefore it is inner product of mu with restriction of new from g to h right because i am wearing h only in the group h inner product of mu with restriction of new from g to H. So this proves uh, this beautiful result called Frobenius reciprocity and this is going to be extremely helpful later on when we define induction of a representation of a subgroup to a representation of the group G. Let us write a simpler expression for induction of a class preserving function in terms of coset representatives. Let G be a group and H a subgroup of G of index, let us say M. And let, once you have fixed the index, you can fix coset representative. So let us say T1, T2, and so on. Tm be a complete list of left coset representatives of the subgroup H in the group G. Then for any F which is in center of the group algebra of the subgroup H, is induction can be written in this neater form. So induction of F from the subgroup H to the group G. And if you want to find how does it act on a group element little g, 
so on a group element data g it should act in this nice form summation f dot of t i inverse g into t i where i going from 1 to m okay so we have gotten rid of this 1 by h factor here once we fix coset representatives proof so you see t1 t2 tm are the coset representatives of h and g and every group g is a union of coset representatives of its subgroups right so therefore g is a disjoint union of t1h disjoint union t2h and so on tm h consider the induction of f from the subgroup h to the group g and acting on this group element g write down the formula so that is 1 by order of the subgroup h summation you run x in the group g and then consider f dot of x inverse gx right but uh, g has this decomposition so i can write it in this double summation 1 by order of h summation i from 1 to m okay i from 1 to m and then for each coset i run little h in the group h subgroup h right and therefore it become f dot and now each x which is in g which will lie in a unique ti h therefore it can be written as ti into little h right so it can be written as h inverse ti inverse this g remains and then ti into h now observe the following by definition of this uh, dot construction f dot of a group element will be f of that group element if the group element is in the subgroup and zero otherwise note that h inverse ti inverse g ti h is in the subgroup h if and only if ti inverse g ti is in the subgroup h right because this little h is in h already since f is in the center of the group algebra of the subgroup h it follows that that is f is a class function so it follows that f of this element h inverse ti ti inverse g ti h is same as f of ti inverse g into ti okay whenever whenever this ti inverse g ti is in the subgroup h whenever ti inverse g ti is in the subgroup h then h inverse of ti inverse g ti into h is a conjugate of this element of h and f is a class function so f will give the same value on that so we have this equality and therefore this implies that the induction of f from the subgroup h to the group g acting on the little group element g is just same as summation i from 1 to m and i can replace it by summation h in h and it become f of f dot of t i inverse g t i okay but now you see this summation summation is over little h in h and t i inverse g t i but therefore there is no role of h here so all these values are the same and they are added order of h many times so that get cancelled so it is just same as summation i from 1 to m f dot of t i inverse g t i which is what we wanted to prove next we will define induced representations 
थैंक यू